Hi, I'm Megan Townsend with the GLAAD Media Institute, and I'm here to break down the Vita Russo test for you. This is a set of criteria GLAAD created to analyze how LGBTQ characters are positioned in films. We named the Vita Russo test after celebrated film historian and GLAAD co-founder Vita Russo. This test is designed to help guide filmmakers to create better films with more multidimensional LGBTQ characters. That means more than just representation, but inclusion of a variety of LGBTQ characters of all shapes, colors, backgrounds, and abilities. To pass the Vita Russo test, the film must feature a character that is identifiably lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and or queer. And by that, we mean on screen but the character can't be solely or predominantly defined by their sexual orientation or gender identity. They need to have the same kind of unique character traits that straight or non-transgender characters do. So not just a lawyer that says she's going home to her wife, but a lawyer with career drama, relationship issues, and a sense of humor, a 3D character. And the LGBTQ character needs to be tied into the plot in an essential way. They can't just provide colorful commentary, paint urban authenticity, or, and this is perhaps most common, set up a punchline. The character must matter. But you're thinking, I see great movies with compelling LGBTQ characters all the time. Moonlight, Love, Simon, Call Me By Your Name, A Fantastic Woman, The Shape of Water. True, these recent films do pass the Vita Rosso test with flying colors, but they're still few and far between and primarily only have limited distribution from indie studios. GLAAD's Studio Responsibility Index found that only nine of the 14 LGBTQ inclusive major studio releases of 2017 passed this simple test, including Rough Night, Beauty and the Beast, Alien and Covenant, and Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. And just because a film passes this element doesn't mean it's not problematic or offensive in its portrayal of LGBTQ people. We have to assess the story. Is it nuanced or full of harmful tropes? Our annual Studio Responsibility Index includes a breakdown of these characters and examines just what narratives we're actually seeing. Look at this total fail from Do It Like an Ombre. But on the other hand, here's a movie moment that we give two thumbs up from Rough Night. He's is moving, we're a thing. Love wins. What'd you just say? I don't know, I mean, who knows if it will work out. And I don't know how you're gonna get to New York, I guess hitchhike, but. I, I already have my bags packed, actually. So, <laughs> well, just cause I'm between places, I just, <laughs> shut up. Over the course of the film, Frankie and Blair get back together after realizing they're still in love. Rough Night did a great job of giving their relationship as much screen time as their straight counterparts, and they got their on-screen kiss and fairy tale happy ending, something queer couples are still often denied in media. The Vita Russo test criteria represent a minimum standard. GLAAD expects a greater number of mainstream Hollywood films to reach this in the future. But we're also seeing a really limited representation of characters from the LGBTQ spectrum. 64% of the inclusive films from the last year featured gay male characters, and there were no transgender characters in any major studio release. We also want more racial diversity to accurately reflect our community. In 2017, there were zero Asian or Pacific Islander LGBTQ characters. So if you have the power to greenlight films, we encourage you to think about the ways you can include accurate, interesting portrayals of a wide variety of LGBTQ people in the movies you're making. And if you're a film fan, like I am, get on social media, write an op-ed, or make your own Vita Russo tested films to show them how it can and should be done. Learn more about the Vita Russo test and about our upcoming GLAAD Media Institute courses at glad.org institute and click research to see all of our reports. Thank you.